We are going to look at Excel Chapter 3 next. So if you would like to take a look at flipping over to pages EX 114 and 115, this chapter, they don't give us a good illustration to look at to begin with. The example on 114 is kind of the basic for us to get started, but they're showing us some numbers um, that we're not going to have for a while until we get our spreadsheet set up. So we're going to do a lot of flipping around in Excel Chapter 3. But we're going to take a look at working with a larger worksheet in this chapter. And again, this is a budget, but this is a budget for a company. And we're going to look at something called what if analysis. So let's go to Excel and open up a blank workbook. Again, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see. You really need to be able to see from column A through I on your screen. We're going to create this spreadsheet today for Caitlin's Ice Cream Shop. And this is going to be their six month financial projection. Now, normally we have been selecting our titles and doing a merge and center, and it kind of looks like that's what they've done here, but all they've really done is they have filled this with color. So I'm going to select. A1 through I2 and go get yourself a fill color. And then they've changed the font color to white. Our title, I'm not exactly sure the size, so I might use my increase font size, make it a little bit larger, and then maybe bold it. All right, we are going to go over to cell H1 and we're going to put the date in here. When you create a budget, depending on the type of budget you're creating, sometimes you need a date and a time. And what we're going to use the feature that they illustrate is called the now function. So if you type in equal now and a left and a right parenthesis with nothing in the parentheses, that's going to give us a date and time as of this very second. And depending on your industry, if you were in an agriculture industry, oil industry, and you needed to know a number like right then for your budget, that might be important. In this example for this little ice cream shop, they are not showing the time. So we could go up to format and down to format cells and maybe just pick the date category. Yeah, I believe they have one digit for the month, two for the day and two for the year. So we can format it just like that. Okay, we're going to go down and nothing is in cell A3, but we're going to type in January in cell B3. And we know that we do not have to type all of the months because we can use that little fill handle and Excel will copy an example for us. Now, not only do I want to copy January, but I would like to angle my text. So we're going to go up to the Home tab and in the Alignment group, there's a little small AB tool called Orientation. And we're going to angle that counterclockwise. And then we're going to fill handle that clear over through I. So we're going to go January through June. And then instead of July, we're going to call this total. And then instead of August, we're going to call this chart. Now let's select that row. And let's maybe add a little bit of color to it. Looks like made it maybe blue. And then I'm going to add a border underneath it just to kind of separate the headings from the rest of the spreadsheet. So if you wanted to adjust the color, we looked at that last chapter. And I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to choose a thick bottom border so you guys can see that just a little bit better. All right, so for our six months financial projection, we're going to keep track of our revenue and our cost of goods sold. Right away, I can tell I need to best fit. And when you best fit in this example, it's going to make it kind of large because I have that Caitlin's ice cream shop for my title. So if you don't want a best fit, remember, you can always drag this over to whatever size you would like it to be. You might notice that cost of goods sold is indented. So if you take a look at your alignment tools, you have a couple tools up here. You can decrease or increase indent. So I'm going to indent cost of goods sold. It's like a sub heading underneath revenue. And then I have gross margin. 
And then we skip row seven and we're going to go down to row eight and we're going to have an expense section. And then in the expenses, we're going to indent all of these, but we're going to keep track of a bonus, commission, site rental, marketing, equipment, repair, and maintenance. It looks like I need to best fit that again. And then total expenses. We're going to skip a row and then we're going to go down to operating income. And then we're going to even have a little bit more info right below that. But let's go up and get some numbers. I'm going to minimize just a little bit here so we can kind of see what's going on. We do need to type the numbers across row four for our revenue. And that's really all the numbers that you're going to type in from page 114. If those numbers are difficult for you to see, if you want to flip over and take a look at page EX116, the numbers are there also. So we're going to type in our January revenue of 55,000, February is 62,500, March we have 67,000, then we have 90,250 in April. 77.5 in May and June 74.750. And then let's auto sum that and see if we're getting the total that we should be getting. 427. Now they have added a floating dollar sign. So remember from last chapter, the fixed dollar sign is the accounting format. It's right here. The float dollar sign we have to go up to currency to grab that so let's check out that floating dollar sign all right so cost of it sold we need to get some formulas going in our spreadsheet and we need to type in a little section at the bottom called what if assumptions so we need to get you over to another page if you look at page 116 you can kind of see what the basis of our spreadsheet is going to look like up in example A and they have just cut off that bottom little what if assumption. So we need to get over to a page so you can see that bottom part of the spreadsheet. So if you want to flip over and take a look at, well, let's get you over and maybe page 163 I think will show the whole thing. So on 163, notice that we're going to type in that little what if assumption in a little section that's in the lower left hand corner. So that's what was missing earlier in the textbook. So we're going to go down to A18 and this is called what if assumptions. And I believe they have italicized that. And then we've got some little headings here. We have margin. We're going to keep track of a bonus. We're going to have sales, oops, sales revenue for bonus. Next, we have commission, site rental, marketing, and equipment, repair and maintenance and that is hard to see it is a tiny font and we have some numbers so we need to go over to column b and this is when you might want to flip back over to page 116 the numbers are a little bit larger here for you your margin is 78.75 percent and i have just found through the years that when i'm working with dollars and percents in the same spreadsheet percents sometimes can get a little mind of their own so i like to format the cell for a percent to start with so I format it for a percent and I can tell I need two decimal places. So I'm going to increase my decimal two times and type in 78.75. My next number is going to be a dollar amount. So it's 3,500. My sales revenue for a, for a bonus is 6,500. I'm sorry, 65,000. I want to format those for a floating dollar sign. And then the next four numbers that I'm going to type in, they're all going to be 
percent. So I'm going to highlight all four of those. Use my little percent tool in two decimal places. And I'm going to type in 25 percent. And then I've got 10 percent and 5 percent and 3.5 percent. So those should be formatted correctly if you set those for a percent ahead of time. All right, now I'm going to minimize so we can see everything. And it's time to write some formulas. And the formulas that are going to be beneficial to you are in your textbook. And we'll get you over to a page. EX134 is a great table that's set up for you with all your formulas. So a cool feature in this chapter is something called absolute formulas. In previous chapters, we have wanted to write a formula, and we wanted that formula to update and change when we copied it. We used that fill handle, and we would copy it, and we wanted cells to update and reflect that change. In this chapter, we're going to see once in a while we don't want that formula to update and change. So let's show you an example of that. If you could go up to cell B5, our formula to calculate cost of goods sold is going to be revenue times 1 minus your margin. So let's hit our equal sign to tell Excel. Here comes our formula. And we're going to get our revenue up in B4 times, remember, use your asterisk to multiply, parentheses. Remember, parentheses make a, a big difference in a formula if you think of order of operations. 1 minus B19, and B19 is our margin down here, parentheses. Now, in a minute, I want to write this formula once, and then I want to fill handle that across. Can you see what would be wrong if I fill this across if we take a look at our formula? When I fill handle this, the B4 is going to automatically change to C4 and look at my revenue. And it's going to change to D4 and look at my revenue and change to E4 and look at my revenue, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want it to do here. But our problem in this formula is B19. If I fill handle this formula over to the right, that B19 is going to change to C19, and there is nothing here. It's going to change to D19, and nothing is here, and E19, nothing here. So I want to tell Excel, keep looking at this number. Don't change it. So to make that happen, I need you to type in dollar signs around B and 19. And the shortcut to make that happen is just to reach up and hit your function 4 key. And when you hit your F4 key, that should stick in dollar signs for you in front of the B and in front of the 19 and tell Excel, look at this cell only. Don't change when you copy it. And that is called absolute referencing. So let's see how that works. Let's fill handle that. Whoops. Let's fill handle that clear across. And when you fill handle that clear across, let's look over and see and see what the formula is. That B4 changed to C4, which is what we wanted it to do, but we wanted it to keep looking at cell B19. So it looks like that's going to work for us. Okay, let's go calculate our gross margin. And the gross margin is just the difference between revenue subtracting the cost of goods sold out. So our equal sign, and we're going to take B4 revenue minus B5, cost of goods sold. Example, I want both of those numbers to change as I fill handle it. So in this example, I do not need to make either one of those numbers absolute. If we leave them the same, that's called relative referencing. And then let's fill handle that over to the side. And then let's look, add some comps here. And then we're going to add a border. Let's sell row six. And let's just go to cell styles and grab total. So hopefully you're getting 336, 262, 50 for your total gross margin. 
right, we are going to go down to commission. We're going to skip bonus for a second because that's a tougher formula. Let's go down to commission. And our commission formula, we are going to take our revenue times our commission percentage. So all the numbers that we're referring to in our budget are down here in, in an area called what if assumptions, allowing me to make a few changes down here and then my entire spreadsheet will change. So that's kind of what we're looking at in this chapter. So let's take our equal sign, revenue B4 times our commission, which is down in B22. So I want my B4 to change. I want to look at C4, D4, E4, but B22, I want to keep looking at B22. So let's absolute B22. Again, F4 will allow you to absolute it. Just want that comma. And let's fill it. Let's go down to site rental, same idea. Equal sign, revenue, times my site rental percentage, which is down in cell B23. I want to absolute B23. I don't want it to change. I want to keep looking at that. I'm going to change it for a comma. And we'll fill handle it. Marketing, same idea. So these four together are very similar. You just multiply your revenue times the respective percentage and absolute it. So B4 times absolute B24, format it for a comma. And then one more similar to that, your equipment repair and expenses. So hopefully that will give you a few more multiplying and using an absolute. Now we're going to go back to the formula that's a little bit different. It's our bonus. And if I can get you to flip in your textbook and kind of take a look at an example here. If you could look over at page EX163, if you look specifically at the bonus row, row nine, you'll notice that some months, we are paying a bonus and some months they get zero. So some months zero and some are 3,500. So we're gonna write a statement and it's called an if statement. If our revenue is good and it's above a certain dollar amount, we are to pay a bonus. If our revenue is not above a certain dollar amount, we do not pay a bonus. So we're gonna set this up as an if statement. So you can see what that if statement looks like on page 134. But as let's kind of talk about it as we set it up. So we're going to go equal if parenthesis. So if my revenue, so we're working with B4. If my revenue is greater than or equal to, and my revenue at dollar amount is down here at the bottom. If it's greater than $65,000, I'm going to pay him a bonus. If it's below that, they don't get a bonus for that month. So equal if, parenthesis, B4 is greater than or equal to B21, let the absolute it, comma, they get a bonus of 3,500, which is in cell B20. Again, we need to absolute that. If it's not, comma, they get zero. So an if statement allows you to have the test part, and the test part is this equal if B4 is greater than or equal to B21, that's the test part, and then I have a true part and a false part. So you separate those with commas, and you can kind of see how that's set up. We'll hit enter. It's going to be zero for the first couple months because I can see we did not get above 65,000 the first couple months. But look here, my last four months, I did awesome and they're going to get a bonus here. Let's format that for a currency, a floating dollar sign, and we'll fill that. We're just going to fill that over to G. And then what they're wanting us to do is actually auto sum it in H. So we should hopefully get a total. In total, we're paying 
14,000 for our bonus. So now I believe we are ready to total up our expenses and we can just auto sum that and then we'll fill handle that across. And we can check those numbers on page 163. Hopefully you're getting 199,745. And let's double rule that. So let's select it and go up to cell styles and total. Now our operating income is going to be the difference between our revenue section and our expense section. So we're going to take our equal sign and we're going to take gross margin minus total expenses. And we will fill handle that clear across. And hopefully we are getting 136, 5, 17, 50 your total. And again, page 163 is a good reference point for this. So let's save it. We haven't saved yet. Let's go to file and save as and save it to your flash drive or your folder of some sort or your desktop. And we are going to add a little color and format and fix this up. Oops. They have added color to a few of the cells over here. So a little tool they illustrate in this chapter is the format painter tool. So if I can get you to select A2, I kind of want the same font color and size from A2 in several different locations. So I'm going to be on A2. I go pick up my paintbrush, and then when I click, whatever was formatted in that cell gets painted into another cell. So again, I'm going to format painter, and I am selecting some of my cells here. So you can kind of see how that works. Now, I'm not going to grab these numbers because actually, the format is a little bit different and it kind of messes them up. So I'm just going to use my paint can here. So let's select the rest of these and just use your paint can and maybe adjust your font color. All right, so it's looking, looking similar to our textbook. We're going to add a chart. And normally we have selected a ton of data and charted it and placed the chart on the page. And actually we're placing one little chart in this one little cell and we're going to set up a spark line chart. And a spark line chart tends to show a trend. So we're going to look at our trend for revenue. We can tell it was lower the first couple months and then it went a little bit higher in April and then back down a little bit in June. So we want to show that trend. So if we go up to our insert tab, Sparkline chart of their own group. And to start with, we're going to illustrate a line, Sparkline. And then it asks you, what range of data do you want to work with? And we are going to select January through June. I am not going to select the total because the total would really kind of mess up the look of the trend because it would show a, a large amount here. So we'll OK it, and you can kind of see, I'm going to stretch that out just a little bit. You can see that it was lower the first couple months. It creeped its way up, and then it went down again. And we can just grab the fill handle and pull that all the way down, and that will show us a trend analysis. And again, that's called a sparkline chart for Caitlin's Ice Cream Shop. And then, of course, you can add a style to that if you would like to pick a style. And then actually in the textbook, they have you adjust it from a line to a column type. I just thought the line kind of helps you see a little bit better first what's going on with the trend analysis. So that is a sparkling chart. And I need to add a little color there. We are going to take a look at some goal seeking features and freezing our spreadsheet. This is a fairly small spreadsheet, but if I had this January through December, that would be kind of a big spreadsheet to have on my screen all at once. So if I can get you to select cell B4, 
and go up to view on your ribbon and take a look at the tool called freeze panes and choose freeze panes. Check this out. I'm going to hit my down arrow key. When I hit my down arrow and go down, notice that top row is frozen. So if I have a huge spreadsheet and I have a lot of expenses, I want to make sure I'm staying under January. I can freeze that top row. Go back up. Let's arrow over to the right. I want to come over here and I want to look in December and I want to record something. Um, notice my first column is frozen. So it kind of helps as you're working with large spreadsheets. And of course, you can zoom in and out, um, but sometimes just freezing panes and then let's unfreeze it helps you take a look at your spreadsheet. And also, if you have a huge spreadsheet, sometimes, depending on what you're doing, you might want to split your screen up into different windows, and then you can kind of examine and see what's going on in locations, and then unsplit it. So that helps as you're working with big spreadsheets and a lot of data. All right, we are going to take a look at what happens if we make some adjustments in our spreadsheet. So what if analysis is over on page 167? So if you want to join me there, uh, they want us to take a look and examine what would happen if we make some adjustments. So currently our bonus is $3,500, but I want to see what happens to my operating expense or my op operating income. If I adjust this, 3,500 bucks. So currently, my dollar amount is 136, 517, 50. So what I would like you to do to start with is we're going to go get your snipping tool, and we haven't used that for a while. We used that back in Word, but we're going to get your snipping tool, and we're going to snip just this bottom part. I want to remember that 136, 517. So I'm going to snip that, and. I might want to write original or something on top of this so I know that this is my original number. Okay, now we're going to copy it. I'm just going to put that on a new page. So I'm going to paste it right here. Okay, and we're going to go back to our sheet one. In our sheet one, they have called that. We can see what we should call that. They have called that just our six month financial projection. So let's name that so we don't get confused here. Six month financial projection. All right. So from 3,500, we're going to adjust that bonus and they want us to see what would happen if we would change that to 5,000. And you can see it's creeping up or down. What happens? Does it go up or down if we pay out more bonus? So it was 136, and it's creeping down because I'm paying out more for a bonus. All right, and the next dollar amount they want us to adjust, since our bonus is going up, what if we paid a little bit less commission? So commission currently is 25%. It was just that to 2250. Let's see what happens to our operating income. And then finally, your last adjustment, equipment repair and maintenance. It's currently 3.5%. But let's say we have some equipment that's getting old. I know I need to make some repairs or buy something new. I might need to adjust this. So I'm going to change that from 35 to 4% and see what happens overall in my spreadsheet. So I'm going to take a screenshot or a snippet of these changes and then kind of compare the two. So I'm going to call this case one. So I'm illustrating this like this because your lab activity is similar to this. You're going to have about three different cases, and I want you to take snippets of all of them. See, we, we want to reflect and we want to see okay, what happened to this number. Let's copy it and paste it. And so with these, what if an app 
this is numbers. I was at 136,517.50. I increased my bonus, but I am paying less commission and I need to up my equipment repair and maintenance just a little bit. And we can see the reflection of operating income goes up a lot, almost $10,000. I'm sorry, almost $100,000, not quite. All right, so that's a little bit with a snippet that I want you to do in one of your lab exercises. So I'm just going to call this what if analysis. All right, we're going to take a look at your six month financial projection. So let's undo it and take that back to your original numbers. take it back that much. Let's save it first. Okay. Can come back over here. Let's take it back to 3500 for our bonus. Our commission was $25. And our equipment repair and maintenance was $2250. All right, with those adjustments and changes, we're going to take a look at a little tool and um, we're going to examine what happens in your spreadsheet if you change a, a number. So we're going to go up and take a look at the data tool. Again, I, I might have to undo this. I might, I'm going to undo and take this back to the original. I didn't want to lose my data here, but I think I'm going to have to just to get it back over here. Okay, there we go. All right, so I want to see what happens when my what if analysis gets adjusted. So let's say that I'm trying to make ends meet and my operating income I know needs to be a certain amount. So in this example, we're going to take a look and see what happens if I know I need my dollar amount to be a certain amount right here. I have my problem is this number is wrong. And that's why my whole spreadsheet looks a little off. There we go. That looks better. I think. Okay. So tiny, I can't see the numbers in the textbook. So let's say I need this to be $200,000. So I want to show you if you go up to the data tab, there's a tool called what if analysis. And on what if analysis, there's a tool called goal seek. And on goal seek, we are able to type in a, an amount. So if I want this to be $200,000, I can type that in and then I can see what I need to make a change to. So if I want to decide how much my site rental is, maybe my site rental is a little bit too much. If I lower that just a little bit or raise that a little bit, what will happen to my operating income? So in this case, I want my operating income, or I need it to be $200,000. To get that $200,000, currently my site rental is 10%. I would need to cut that. And it's, it's a negative. It, it's too much. I can't get $200,000. So let's say I want this to be $150,000. Let's try that. And you kind of can play with the numbers here. So that's the good thing about a spreadsheet that's set up like this. All the numbers change and reflect that change in your spreadsheet and your chart. Let's go seek. Let's do baby steps. Let's do 150. And then see what my site rental would have to be adjusted to. Okay, I can do, I can do that. 5.44%.
So the nice thing about what if analysis, you can kind of just play with those. So this is what management would do if they're trying to make a certain amount or they're trying to balance a budget and make it cut somewhere. They're going to take a look at something called maybe this what if analysis and determine you know, where we can make some cuts. All right, so we are going to take a look at creating a chart. And the chart in this textbook is a column, a clustered column chart. And they're going to have us select from A through A3, I believe, through G3. Hold down your control key and grab A9 through G13. Let's try that again. Remember when you select, you have to have a balanced amount of cells selected or it will give you a blank spreadsheet. All right, we're going to go to insert and we're going to go to charts and we're going to go to the insert column or bar chart and we'll just grab a 2D see what that looks like and we'll place this on a new sheet and we're going to call it our expense chart and we want to make it make sure we have a title so we know what's what this represents our six month projected expenses Now, the nice thing about working with a chart, you can customize this and make it look however you would like. Um, this one that we're looking at right now, I haven't added very many elements. And I can quickly add elements with the plus sign to the right side of my chart, or I can go up to Add Chart Elements. Do I want to add an axis title? I have a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. And I could add an axis to each of those. If I wanted to explain, okay, this is going to be recorded in dollar amounts. I think in the textbook, maybe they just stick a dollar sign here. And if I wanted to come down here and say months, you know, we can figure that out. But sometimes you have numbers and you don't know if you're looking at dollars or percents or what exactly it is that you're looking at. Now, if I wanted to add a little bit of style, I can go up and add a style to this. So some of these with a dark background would waste a bunch of ink if you would try to print those. But you might want something that might have a data label on it. If you wanted to see a number by, see how that's got a number beside each piece. And then there are some options under quick layout, you know, different look. If you wanted the legend to be to the side or at the top. And I think in the textbook, they should put at the top. So a lot of different features that you can kind of play with as you are working through setting up and customizing your chart. OK, so the new thing in this chapter was to take a look at what if analysis. We looked at the F4 key, which is the absolute tool. And we would like to show you just a couple more things here. i got a couple more things in my notes. They want us to go back over to the six month. And we looked at this last chapter, but if you do a select all and go to page layout, remember you can choose a theme. I don't care what theme you choose. And then there's a little tool. Let's select cost of goods sold. On the review tab, there's a little tool called Smart Lookup, and if you wanted to look up what something means, you can define it, get a little ex exploration definition if you wanted to, and find out, okay, what is cost of goods exactly? And we'll open it up over here to the side. So it's called a Smart Lookup, kind of a new little feature. All right, and then we looked at goal seeking and made some adjustments to our spreadsheet. Um, you will need to know the idea of the new sheet and the what if analysis 
that was not illustrated in the textbook to snip that. You're going to snip some of those so I can see what your dollar amounts are. So that is not something that's illustrated in the textbook. So I just kind of wanted to show you what that looks like. All right, I believe that will get you through what you need for chapter three. Chapter three, you have a big lab assignment at the end of the chapter and that will review everything in this chapter. And it gets kind of deep. Got lots of tough formulas, but you're gonna practice the deciding if it should be a relative reference, reference or an absolute reference. And that will be a good practice to get you ready for your hands-on test at the end of the chapter. So you're going to look at lab one. It's called the eight-year financial projection. So you should create the spreadsheet that I just walked you through for the ice cream shop. And then you'll work on the eight-year financial projection, which is another spreadsheet very similar to what we just created. Lots of formulas, sparkline charting, what if analysis, cases, all sorts of things. Those cases, if you would snip those and put those on a new sheet for me, and then you'll submit um, that spreadsheet for me. Uh, remember to add both things to the Dropbox before you hit submit. Make sure you call, email, stop by if you have questions or need help, and that will finish up Excel for us.